In today's 15 minute fundamental session, what we're going to do is take a look at the basics of financial reporting. Now, you've already potentially gone through and taken a look at our 15 minute fundamental session on the chart of accounts. That's going to be very, very important for you when it comes to building your financial reports. So if you haven't already had a look at the session on the chart of accounts, I'd recommend that you do that. But the reason why it is going to be important is because with SAP Business One, there's a number of different ways that you can build your financial reports, like your profit and loss, like your balance sheet. Now, the first way that you can do it is you can get the system to automatically construct your P&L and your balance sheet formats based on the layout of the chart of accounts. So what do I mean by that? It will look at the order in which the accounts are structured in the chart of accounts. It'll look at the different levels that you've set for those accounts and it will automatically assemble your P&L or your balance sheet based on that. Let's go and take a look at that and you'll see what I mean. So first things first, let's go and we'll take a look at our chart of accounts. So I'm going to go here into the chart of accounts and you'll see that we have our assets, our liabilities, our equity and so on. So if I look at my, um, my revenue and expenses, or actually if I look at my revenue here, you'll see the order in which these accounts appear will be read in by SAP Business One when it's creating that basic profit and loss and balance sheet for you. So what you can do is you have the ability to be able to move these accounts up and down. So you can say, you know what, even though numerically this account sits after this account, I'm going to want to put it up above this account. And hopefully that makes sense because then you're going to have um, that the accounts appearing in that order. The other thing that's important as well here is the level of the accounts that you put in here. All right, so um, the level that you set against the accounts when we create the P&L, for example, you're going to see where that kicks in. So in order to move these accounts up and down, you can't do it from here. What you need to do is you need to come here into the edit chart of accounts. So let's say, for example, I want to edit my revenue accounts. So I'll say OK. And then you'll see I've got my accounts here. I've got my um, sales revenues for Canada. So what I can do is you'll see I'm telling the system right now to put it after this account. But what I can do is I can say, you know what? I actually want it after the JB Printer Revenues account, which is 4111 and the rest of the numbers there. So I can say, I want to put that after this account, and you'll see it's now automatically moved that account up there inside the, uh, inside the chart of accounts layout. And then I can say update, and we're done. All right, so again, that's how you move the accounts up and down. Now, why is that important? Well, when you come in here, and you start looking at your financial reports. And we're gonna look in here at the financial reports and you start looking at things like your profit and loss statement. Uh, you start looking at things like your balance sheet. If I go in here and I choose profit and loss, what you're going to see is SAP Business One uses this concept of templates. So what you can do is you can create financial reports templates and they're up here in the financial report template area. But in order for you to get going straight away, you can just go ahead and use this standard chart of accounts template and it will use the order in which the accounts appear in your chart. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, of course, you can do other things in here. You can specify when I'm doing my profit and loss, what posting dates do I want to um, select based on? Do I want to select based on due dates? Do I want to select based on document dates? But normally when you're doing a P&L, it's usually the posting date that you're going to be working off. Then you can specify things like, um, do I want to include accounts with a zero balance? in my P&L? Do I want to see um, accounts and do I want to see the foreign name of the account listed? Because remember, 
what we can do with SAP Business One is when we create an account in the chart, you can also put in what's called a foreign name. So if you are um, not only generating your own profit and loss, but you actually have to generate a P&L that uses the account numbers that maybe, or the account descriptions that maybe your head office uses, then that's where the foreign name can be um, important. Same thing with the external code. You can say, well, look, this account number is 4111058, but in my uh, parent organization chart of accounts, they call it 1315778. So you can record that there. Now, the beauty of that, just as a side point, and we talked about this in the um, fundamental session on the chart of accounts, is you can then generate exports of your transactions and you can export those transactions or just the balances. You can do a, a, a trial balance and use the external code. So then you can send that as an Excel spreadsheet to your head office and then they can import it straight into their um, system, whatever they're using for doing uh, the, the consolidation of all the accounts from all the different, uh, different countries. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, that's what these values are for. Uh, you can also specify whether or not you want to show the local currency or the system currency, assuming that they're not the same. Now in my current uh, demo data, they are the same, so it really doesn't matter. But um, if I am doing this, what I can do is I can say, you know what, I've got a second column. What do I want to show in there? Do I want to show if I'm showing the local currency? Maybe I might want to see the foreign currency. Or what most people will normally do is I'll say, show me a balance for comparison and the year to date is a pretty good one that you can choose. All right. The next thing you can do um, is when you're in here, you have the capability to be able to come in and you can choose your segments. Now remember with SAP Business One, you can set up a segmented chart of accounts and that's what we've got here, where each of those segments represents you know, a division or a branch or whatever. So if you just wanna do a P&L for a specific segment, then you can come in here and you can say, yep, I just wanna choose that one particular segment, okay? And then I can say, you know what, I just wanna do a P&L for a specific division. So I can come in here and say, I wanna see it for my division one, or I might wanna do my P&L for a particular region. And you can see right now in my sample data, I've only got one division and one region, but if you had five or six here, you would just select the one that you want, okay, just with a tick box, all right? Um, in this case, I'm not going to select any of those. I can also click here on expanded and it'll give me an expanded choice. So now what I'm able to do is I'm able to start doing a P&L based on projects. Now, we're going to talk about projects in a lot more detail in one of our upcoming um, focus months as part of uh, one source. You, you'll be familiar with the fact that we have every month a different curriculum topic. So we're going to be talking a lot more about projects in coming months. But again, this gives you the ability to do a P&L by project or by product line. And remember, these values that we've put in here, these are your, um, these are your dimensions that you've set up in, in SAP Business One using the dimensions capability. All right, so again, lots of different capabilities here to narrow it down to, to get really specific. Or of course, you could just keep it simple, dive in here and click OK, and you'll see the profit and loss statement is now generated. Now, when the profit and loss statement is generated, it's initially going to show you level one. And then you can go in here and you can say, you know what, I want to display subtotals, but I want to hide my titles. Okay, hiding titles usually isn't a good idea when you're looking at the level one. Um, but when I go in and I drill down, I say, okay, now show me all my level two accounts. So you begin to see where this becomes important. Now, yes, there is no data in here. That's because I'm using a financial year that I don't have sample data for. So I'm going to go back in and change that financial year in a second but I just wanted to show you how this concept works um, of these levels and being able to, to drill right down uh, till you get to um, a, a, as much detail as you wanna see. Now, remember when you're generating reports in SAP Business One, if I was just to click okay, 
I would have to go back in and click on profit and loss statement again and open up that option. If I just click here on the little back arrow, it'll take me back to my selection criteria. And so here I can go in and I can actually change my dates. So I can say my posting date, well, you know what? I want to look at 2013 from period one, 2013. And I want to go to period 12 in 2013. So again, I'll just scroll down here till I find period 12. Now, of course I can type it in here and do a find. But there we go, there it is, period 12, 2013. So I'm gonna look at my financial year of 2013. So now I'll say okay. And this time, of course, you'll start to see that we have some of those numbers in there. And again, as you go through and you wanna display your subtotals, right, when you switch these options on and off, Okay, you'll see you start getting these subtotals appearing. I'm going to switch that off for now. And then I can start rolling that up. Let's say I just want to look at level 4. Now, if level 4 is the, the lowest level I've got, then obviously there's not much difference going in and selecting a different level. Okay, but you've got that capability there to have up to 10 different levels of detail with your accounts. So I can go to level 2, or of course I can take it right up to the basic level, which is level one. Okay, so I just get my high level numbers, my revenue, my cost of sale, showing me my gross profit, my total expenses, my operating profit, my profit after financing expenses, and my profit for the period. And then of course, remember, we said we wanted to see our year to date. So, very, very easy, very, very straightforward way of generating that report. Now, the functionality works exactly the same way for your balance sheet. You can come in here for your balance sheet, and again, you can use your chart of accounts template. Exactly the same uh, scenario here. I'm gonna show the balance sheet. Now, remember, balance sheets always carry forwards. They don't reset at the end of every financial year the way that your um, P&L does. Um, so I could just run it now for the 31st of the 12th, 2018, and I'd get some values. But um, it's kind of pointless because there's no change between the end of 2017 and 2018. So I'm just going to go ahead and run it for 2017. Um, and then in my second column here, I'm actually going to show the relative percentage. So what this is going to do, it's automatically going to calculate um, the relative percentage of the particular account at, against the total overall. So the relative percentage of this account uh, of my um, short-term fixed assets against long, sorry, short-term assets against long-term assets. Okay, or short-term uh, debt versus long-term debt. Okay, so I'm gonna select that and then I'll just say okay. And away it goes, the system then goes in and it generates my balance sheet. So very nice, very quick and easy, and then same scenario, I can come in and I can start to drill down to the different levels. And then of course, remember with SAP Business One, it always shows you the reports on the screen first. It doesn't make the assumption that you want to print out the reports, you might just want to get the information that's in here. Now of course, you don't need to print a report to get the balance of the cash on hand account, for example, because remember, you can order, you can just go into the, um, into the chart of accounts and you can open up that account and you'll see that balance there, all right? Um, but I've got those details. Now if I want to print it out, all I have to do is I just hit the print button up the top here or I can do a print preview and I can do a balance sheet or a vertical balance sheet. I'll just do my standard balance sheet now. And we'll get our little print uh, preview. Now remember a lot of these reports uh, are designed to be quick uh, and easy. So that's the reason why it uses this balance sheet, um, um, you know, uh, chart of accounts template because it'll basically generate that report for you, um, you know, as, as quickly and easily as possible. Now, at the moment, I've got the system uh, to utilize my Crystal Reports version of the balance sheet. So again, even though it's a very simple report, 
it actually still has the capability to be uh, tailored so it, it, it can have additional information. So again, if you wanted to, uh, and you have the crystal report skills, you can go in and you can start doing your graphing as well. So you can start building graphs of this information. Okay, um, let's just go through so you can see there's page one, our page two and page three. Of course, I can go back here and when I'm printing my report, I can tell the system I want to do a vertical balance sheet. So let's have a look at the difference with that and I'll say OK. The balance sheet selection criteria comes out just in a, in a quick and easy print layout designer report. So now I've got my vertical balance sheet. So rather than showing um, each of the segments in a almost like a grid format, it's like a side by side format, now it's showing it to me in the traditional method. Where I've got my assets and then my liabilities and, and so on and so forth. All right, so you've got um, all of those uh, all of those capabilities and remember this is all straight out of the box and that's what I wanted to focus on uh, in this particular session is just show you what you can do very very quickly and easily so the last thing I want to show you is your trial balance uh, and so when you're doing your trial balance you've got a couple of things that you can do here remember your trial balance is fundamentally just showing you a list of all the accounts and the balances for every single one of those accounts now You've got the ability to come in here and you can do a trial balance and you can select your business partner. I'm going to untick the business partner because I'm not interested in doing a trial balance for my business partners. I want to do a trial balance for my GL accounts. And so I can come in here and I can select which of the account groups do I want to include. And I've just selected all just by clicking the X on the top of the grid there. Now you'll notice I'm saying level one. So it's basically saying, well, that's all I'm going to show you but if I was to come in here and say I want to see for example um, level 3 or level 4 so I go into level 4 and now I can see all of these uh, accounts in detail so again same scenario I can select or deselect those accounts okay um, so I'm going to select them all and then we've got our options here as well uh, again I'm going to just go in and I'm going to change my financial year I'm going to not go through all that process of doing the selection because I can just come in here um, and type this in. So I'll say from the 1st of the 1st 2016 to the 31st of the 12th 2016. And then I want to show, um, uh, I don't want to show um, zero balance accounts so I can click on the hide zero balanced account or I can leave that there and just say, just don't show me a a any accounts with no postings. Um, I can show my info against my control accounts. Again, same scenario here, my foreign names, my external code. Do I wanna see this same as the P&L and the balance sheet? Do I wanna see an annual, quarterly, monthly, or periodic report? Again, if I say um, I wanna do quarterly, um, it's going to break it down into quarterly totals for me. But in this case, I'm going to say annual, monthly, it'll break it down into monthly totals. So I'll just leave it at annual for now. Again, I've got these other options. I've got these expanded options. What sort of journal entries do I want to include or exclude? Okay. Uh, or I can just go in here and say, that's what I want to see. I'll say, okay. And now I get my trial balance. Now of course I can expand that out with one click and then I've got that same capability to come in here and select my level of detail that I want to see. Alright, so very very quick, very very easy. I know I keep saying that but it's true, it is quick and it is easy but it's not the only way you can do this. When we come back in our next session what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the financial report templates we're going to look at how you can start building more complex and more detailed financial reports here utilizing these templates where you're not just relying on the structure of the chart of accounts to generate the layout of the of the financial reports but you're building your own specific structures to where you want the accounts how you want them grouped and so on and so forth so that's what uh, these financial report templates are all about